Welcome to the Faith Stories of Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Today we get to hear from Bob Tiedel. Bob has been a lifetime member at Our Savior's. In fact, if you walk in and look at the confirmation pictures, Bob is up here in the class of 1963. Bob's family was also, they were charter members of Our Savior's. So he has a lot of history with this church. And so we thank him today for sharing a part of his faith story with all of us. So Bob, first of all, thank you so much for being here and telling us more about your faith story. Um, yeah, we're, we're just happy that you're here. And so I wanted to start off by just asking you, what are, being your lifelong member of Our Saviors, what are some memories or just tell me a little bit about your history at Our Saviors. Well, I started out at, you know, as, as early as I can remember, we, we would go to Sunday school. The church was down on uh, 8th and Minnesota Street, and it was just a real neat place. But, you know, it, it, you don't remember a lot till you get older, but I, I remember very vividly Pastor Brown because my mother and him were really close, and he had a big Buick, and he, he was just the coolest guy you could ever meet. And... You know, he was the first one. And uh, then as I, as I got older, you know, we went through the Cub Scout thing and we went through the, uh, 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 the commute, or not the communion, uh, confirmation. And that was very interesting because at that time, Pastor Mogelson was the guy that was in charge and he, he was a little older and more maybe defined where it was, uh, you know, he, he did a lot of stuff that was more strict like a school teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we're gonna do and not that he was a, not that people were offended by it, but it was just a different style of teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, when we'd go to Sunday school, it was just, you know, my mother taught Sunday school a lot and she, uh, you know, she was strict too, but you know, you didn't feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. And not that I felt intimidated by Pastor Mogelson, but it was just a different mm -hmm. style that I was used to, you know, learning from or whatever. Yeah. Did you have to do a lot of memory work in confirmation? All we had to do was read seven chapters in the Bible a week. And that, that, was, that, was, that was tough. Yeah. You know, it took a lot of knuckling down and, mm -hmm. and you know, grabbing it and running with it. I wasn't that I wasn't that interested in reading period and uh, but we did it because it was the, what the big guy wanted mm -hmm. and uh, it was just really cool. So then you talked to about a couple of other pastors that were very memorable for you, Pastor Assumption and Pastor Peterson. Yeah, and uh, uh, there was Pastor Peterson had a son that was my age, and we kind of chummed together, and it, it made it easy. And Pastor Sumption, those two, the parsonage at that time was on Broadway, uh, about the uh, 1100 block. And it was, it was ironic that when, I don't know where the parsonage moved from there, but the people that bought it after it was sold their family became a good friend of mine, and, and uh, I chummed with their son. It was the Paul Zines, Henry Paul Zine, and we were very good friends, and it was just ironic that, because I talked to Cleo all the time about that, she just, yeah, it, it's just so cool that mm -hmm. you were still connected kind of yeah. to it. Yeah. But uh, it, I'm, I'm sure there are many people that didn't even know we had a parsonage, and then where the different parsonages were. So. Well, I remember the first one was too. The first one was uh, kind of right next on Minnesota Street, uh, probably the middle of the 600 block, probably 618 or something. Mm -hmm. And that was where Pastor Brown was. Okay. And it was just so cool. So, and just for people who are listening, Pastor Brown and then also Pastor Olson, who was here later, are two pastors that went on to become bishops from yeah. the congregation. That's so when we get to your faith, 
you wrote about, um, we talked a little bit about, you know, as you wrote your faith story about prayer. Yep. And so tell me about prayer in your life. Like what's important to you about prayer and what it means to you? Prayer is important to me because uh, it, it's a name that, you know, it's, it's a word that we use, but it's, it's, talking to the, it's talking to the Lord. And I talk to the Lord more than anybody can imagine. I wake up in the middle of the night and I go to the bathroom or something, and if I can't go right back to sleep, I'll, I'll ask him about tomorrow or how things went yesterday. And it, 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 it's just an easy way to talk to somebody. And if you want to talk to anybody, talk to that guy because he's the guy you want to talk to because yeah. he'll get results for you. And you, and you wrote too, you know, that God's always listening. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then um, you talked, uh, I asked you if you'd been to Bible camp. And where did you go to Bible camp? Green Lake Bible camp. And that was, that was many, many years ago. And, and the, the most memorable thing about Green Lake Bible camp when I went there was there was a bunch of kids that came from Hanska. And that my, my mother was from Hanska, and a lot of those people, you know, interacted with them because of their, uh, you know, connection to Hanska. And I still see some of them today yet. And it's just, you know, that was the thing that I remembered most. Mm -hmm. And, and going, going to the cafeteria because it was just like a mess hall, like we yeah. experienced in the military yes. and the church, we, we go occasionally on, Memorial Day weekend to go up and listen to Pastor Todd preach. And it is just so neat. It, you know, you, you have memories, but very seldom can you go back that close to the memories that you have there. And you can at camp. So for those who don't know, um, the church that's on at Green Lake Bible Camp, there's um, a stop church. And Faith Lutheran and Spicer hold Sunday mm -hmm. worship services yep. there during the summer. So if you ever wanted to go to Bible camp to worship, you can. Yep, absolutely. And that was on Sunday morning. That is so neat going yeah. up there. So um, tell me a story about a time God helped you in your life. Uh, well, that was back in 19, wait, no, it wasn't 19, I'm sorry. When my, when my grandson was born, he was born with a heart defect. And for the first three months, he spent a lot of time at Children's Hospital. And this would have been probably around the middle of January of probably, what would that be? I have to look here once. Anyway, it would have been probably in, in He was born in 15, so it would have been uh, January of 2016. Okay. He had he had an issue with his valve, and he he had an artificial valve put in, and uh, the valve started leaking, and he went in to surgery, and it was a nine-hour surgery. And he had, to, he had to have a bypass three times so that they, they, they were having a hard time. They, they had to, there was three leaks on that valve and they had to do it. And his, his you know, he was just so tiny that it, it just, uh, it, and, and that was, me and, me and Cork, we sat in the hotel and we were just really concerned about how that was going to go because it wasn't supposed to last as long as it did and it lasted wow. longer than it did but he came out of it you know in real good shape and you know he's 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 chipper than you can ever think a five-year-old could be and you know that's that's where god was with us and i mean he could have took him or he could have kept him for us and he kept him for us and i'll never ever you know, mm -hmm. forget that because right. that was so cool. And the same thing with my, with, I had a traumatic brain injury also that year. And I had no clue how bad it was. And I, I ended up spending a total of 
a whole month in Abbott, and there again, I I uh, I was while I was in there, uh, I just pretty much communicated with the big guy by myself, and mm -hmm. uh, when when I got back home and and Pastor Deb had been there to visit somebody and she didn't know I was there, otherwise she'd have stopped and visited. And I said, no, you don't have to worry about that. I was dealing with the big kahuna myself. <laughs> and it, it, she, she just chuckled, but you know, that, that's, that is just so, so neat to be able to, I, and, I, and as I was growing up, I was never that close. But there's different things that happen in your life mm -hmm. where you start to see things that you didn't always see before. Mm -hmm. And this, not, as I get older, the best thing I could have ever done, and I have to thank my mother and my wife for, for getting me involved in the church, because after I got out of the military, you know, I had to adjust back to civilian life. Mm -hmm. And it took my wife to, you know, bring me along back and put me down the right path. And with, without, without your wife or your mother or your father, you know, mm -hmm. God bless them for being in my life. Yeah, well, God used them right. to help you yeah. and get you back on the track that you needed yep. to be on. Yeah. So how are, what are the different things you've done to serve God and our Saviors? Well, we, uh, we, we did the, uh, we do the prayer chain. Or I do the prayer chain, and we did the, uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> Alter Guild. Alter Guild. And the uh, stewardship committee, and uh, I also was lucky enough, and it was Virginia Benson that really got me involved in making cakes for the funerals. Mm -hmm. And it was it was it was just so neat that you'd get called, and I'd make my German chocolate cake and bring it in, mm -hmm. because I was I I had developed a thing about going to funerals. I you know. You kind of go to the people that you know, mm -hmm. and I went to a funeral one time, and uh, I was a little disgusted that that they had uh, they had a funeral casserole, but it didn't have any meat in it. And so when my mother passed away, and we were making the arrangements, Pastor Todd was still here, and I told Pastor Todd, I said, "Now, when them girls make that casserole." Make sure they put meat in it this time. <laughs> and and he, he said, yeah, okay. And then about six years later, my dad, my mother died. And, and uh, we were making the arrangements for my mother, and Pastor Todd was there, and we were talking about the meal, and he said, oh, by the way, Bob, we're going to make sure we get meat, <laughs> meat in the casserole. And it was, you know, it, we have to find humor in a lot of stuff, and yeah. that was what I found humor in. you got to have some fun. Yep. Well, one of the things that you remember that I also remember is probably when I got to know you was in 1991. Not 91. That you drove the bus to Texas. I think it was 84. Really? You maybe drove in 84 too. There was yeah. a gathering, but when in, you Dallas. Went to Dallas, yep. the, in 1991. Okay. Um, I was here as the youth director. Yep. And you took that busload of kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And had the patience of a saint what? as we drove around the city of Dallas yep. and then all the things we had to do. Yeah, that, that was, yeah. I, that, was, that was one of the highlights of, of, of serving the church. Mm -hmm. You know, first to get asked mm -hmm. and then to be able to do it. And the, the neatest thing was, was the... Uh, you know the convention itself, yeah. and and all these little these young young kids are learning what they'll want to do and believe in the Lord for the rest of their life, mm -hmm. and it was just there were so so terribly many of them, mm -hmm. and it was and just it yeah. really was neat, and then staying over in Kansas City on the yeah. way down, yeah. Yeah. and it was just really neat, mm -hmm. and I think Carolyn went along, and Carolyn I can't remember. Happy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it it was just so neat. Yeah. Just so Those neat. Are a great experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and to and to be able to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. It's just it was just really and it, it's something, you know, back in the day 
you know, a lot of a lot of the things that they're doing nowadays, we never could do back then. Right, right. You know, and it, it's just, you know, yeah. it's, it's just so neat to be a part of it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I've been to every ELCAU gathering since that Dallas gathering, and yeah, they are highlights. I think as adults, we get as much out of it as yeah. the youth. And, and, it's just, it, and it's just the good feeling to know that when I'm gone, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. because the kids are learning and the kids are, mm -hmm. you know, being a, being a part of the church and it's just so cool. It's That's just beautifully said. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you one more, well, two more questions. Two? The first one is, um, when do you feel closest to God? Oh, that's easy. When I feel closest to God is when I walk into the, uh, into the sanctuary, sit down, and we're talking, and he's there, and I'm there, and it is just the neatest feeling, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, that's, that's when I, yeah. definitely. Just walking in there. Yep, the yep, because yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's like, that's where he's at. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so my last question for you is, what does our Savior's, this congregation, mean to you? Well, actually, it's, it's my home, and I'm, I'm kind of a uh, low visibility uh, person in the church, but it's my home, and I feel every time I'm here, uh, uh, just a, a good feeling that if if we wouldn't have got it, you know, if we was if it wouldn't have came in '47, where would I be? And I'm glad to be here, and it's, it's a neat place, and there's a lot of good people that are here. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. I think this is a wonderful place, mm -hmm. and it is filled with good people, good people like you and good people like your parents yeah. who really helped shape what well, this church would be like. So, this, you know, it's, it's a good place, and I'm glad we did it. Mm -hmm. I am too. And have, have no regrets about anything. Thank you, Bob, for you sharing a part of your story. Yep. And uh, what a blessing you and Corky are to this congregation. Thank you. Thank you very much.